I'm going to learn how to use Photopea to create a Sebastian del Grosso style interpretation. So here's one I did earlier and I'm going to try a new one. So let me just close off that. I'll just click on there. Yes. Okay, so this is Photopea. So I'm going to go and find my picture in Google Drive. So I've got this one here. So I'm going to click on it, go on the three dots for more actions, and then download the image. I don't have to take my picture from Google Drive. I might take it from my network shares, from my desktop, anywhere. But I'm just showing you how you would download a picture of Google Drive. So it's clicking on it, the three dots, and then download. That will have gone into my downloads folder. So on my Mac, that's going to be down here. And I can look it up. Um, oh, there it is. So what I'm going to do is go on Photop and I'm going to open a new image. So it's going to go into my um, look into my computer anyway. So I know that I've just saved it to the downloads. So I'm just going to go and look for that picture, which is oh, there. It is. Okay, so I've got my image on here now, and like I said, I'm going to create a Sebastian Del Grosso style inspired image. So something like this, where it looks like it's drawn um, over the photograph. So back here now. Now I want to colour correct this a little bit because it's a little bit blue tinted at the minute. So I can do that with, maybe if I do it on image, and go to auto tone. There we go. So that's taken the blue cast off just a little bit before I start anything further. Right. So now the layout of Photop is very, very, very similar to Photoshop. So we've got very similar um, menus up here. We've got a very similar toolbar down here, and a very similar background layer system here, channels, and then some of these adjustment layers and things like that down here, adjustment layer, mask, etc. So you should get on really well with it after having used Photoshop in class. I'm going to duplicate this background layer now. So I've got two of it. I will right click on it or control click on the map and then go duplicate layer. So I want to make this layer, the one on the top, look like a drawing. So I'm going to do that by going to filter up here and then on stylize is it? No. Nope. Or oh, maybe it is. Yes, on stylize I'm going to go to find edges. So I'm clicking on that. Okay. So we have that there. I've got a little bit of a colour in there, so it's making it look a bit like a drawing. I wonder if I put an adjustment layer over the top of it and made it black and white, would that get rid of the colour? Yes, it does, which is great. So, um, like in Photoshop, the properties of what I've done have just come up there. So if, for example, I wanted to make my line work a little bit darker, I could go on an adjustment layer, so that's the circle, the black and white circle down the bottom. I'm going to look for brightness and contrast. So I might up a bit more contrast to get rid of those mid-tones, the greys in here. Okay. What I could do as well is if I want some areas to be darker, I can use the blend and the, not the blend tool, it's called a burn tool. So you see this fist over here with the, um, with the gap in the fist, then that is burning it to let light through. So I'm going to click on that. If I'm not happy with the size of it, I can change the size up here or I can press on my square brackets on the keyboard. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I'm selected on that layer. I'm going to try and burn in to make it darker on the areas that I wish to appear darker. 
So for example, like any outliney areas, so it looks a bit more sketchy. Okay, so you can see how those lines are coming up a lot darker. I'll go on the outside of her hair. I can increase the exposure rate here, but it does run the risk of being a little bit too dark. Let's see. I'm just going to go over the outlines of her hands. It's going to look super sketched with any luck. Maybe a little bit more on her lips. A bit more on the hand here. It's picked up the shadow behind her as well. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, maybe a little bit darker on her hair there. Maybe on the chin. Okay, so I'm done on that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove some of this so it looks like the paper's been missing and we'll start to see the picture that's underneath. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the erase tool, which is over here in the toolbar on the left, and it looks like an old fashioned eraser, a rubber. So I'm going to click on that. But I can change the brush that I use with it. So instead of having just a standard circular brush, I'm going to try and find something that looks a bit more like a paint splatter. So something like this, and that if I made it larger, can you see it looks a bit more grainy and a bit splattery? So I'm going to, I'm just double checking it's a razor and I haven't gone on the paintbrush tool. I'm going to try erasing some of the background. Okay, now I'm not seeing that much at the minute because there's not much on the background, it's a plain background. So maybe I can take some of the hair away. So actually, our image beneath at the minute, it's still black and white, so I'm just going to hide off those. And I'll sort that out later, but I just really want to see the colour of this first. So... Now my brush is coming through quite heavy, I can change the flow, I can make it a little bit lighter so it doesn't delete everything straight away. I could even change the opacity actually, come to think of it. I'm just going to get rid of all this background. Okay, let's flip back to Sebastian Del Grosso's work and see what he does. So he's got most of the face in on this and then just the side of him still looks drawn in, so yeah. I'm going to maybe take out that eye. So I'm deleting here still with the eraser tool and the rough brush. And I'm going to lower the opacity again because I feel like it's a little bit too heavy. I want it to be a subtle edge. So I think I might leave that hand on there, but get rid of the background. Does he leave any of the background round hands and things, or is he really tight to the image? I'm going right up to the edge of that. I can make my brush a bit smaller. I'm going on the closed square brackets again to try and get rid of some of these other bits in here. I can make it bigger, get rid of more. Okay, maybe I'm going to get rid of some of this. I think I need to put my opacity back up a bit actually. It's leaving it too faded behind. that forward this on my demo but yeah you're just gonna have to watch me do it really slowly. Let's get rid of some of this from behind too. 
you know what, I'm going to rub out the whole of that hand there. Okay, I'll stop there because otherwise I'll have deleted the whole lot. Now I've got that issue where you've still got that colour coming through there. So if I change it all to black and white, how I had it, that's still quite a nice effect actually. But it's maybe not contrasting as much as when he's in colour. You can't quite see so easily um, the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just attach these two adjustment layers purely to the to the to the drawing layer and not to the background so I can do that by clicking on it and right clicking on it and going clipping mask and then I'm going to do the same on that one and then go clipping mask again okay so now you can see that I can see the color of the background Oop, I want to delete more of the background and have to make sure that I'm clicked on the right layer and I've got much more contrast now with the colours against my drawn layer. Okay, so now if I'm happy with it, I can, well, if I'm not happy with it, I could always go back through the history and erase some of these layers. I could go all the way back to there if I wished, but I don't wish to. So I'm going to go back onto there. And I'm going to save. Now the joy of photo P is you can save it as a PSD file, Photoshop file, which may not sound like that much of an advantage at the minute, but if you save it as a Photoshop file and then save it into your Google Drive, it means that when we come back to school, you'd be able to open it up in Photoshop if you so wished to print it larger and to do things with. That's a really handy thing, so we might want to print these up and put them on the wall. So I've got that file there now. It should be sitting in my downloads, and there it is, PSD file, so I can go back into my Google Drive, and I can drag and drop it in. Okay, so is that appearing? It's quite a large file, so it might take some time. So whilst that's working, I'm going to go back onto Photo P and I'm going to save this file again, but I'm going to export it here. So file export as JPEG so that I've got an image that I can very easily put onto my Google Slides. So making sure that it's got a nice high quality JPEG layer. I'm going to open back up my downloads folder and then go back to Google Drive, that still seems to be uploading, nope, there it is, and because it's a Photoshop file it probably won't show what the image looks like in Google Slides anyway, so I've got that one there now, drag and drop, has it appeared, has it appeared, oh no, hang on, I haven't done Photoshop one again, have I? Cancel that, took the wrong one. This one, drag and drop. Okay, and that will be the end of it. And then I could be like, say, yeah, I could just go on my slides and upload it to it by the normal process. Okay, I hope that is clear and I hope this is usable. Bizarre.